everybody, this is Kelly Stamps, a self-proclaimed minimalist. Or these days I'm more of a mediumist, because I have changed my rigid structure on what is right and wrong with me to purchase. However, I do stick to the general theme of minimalism, which is living off what you need and no more. So in this video, I will show you everything that I own. I'm making this video in response to the many questions I got regarding my recent move. How do you move so easily? What do you do with your things? Can you show us everything that you own? Well, let's get started. This is everything that I own in my bedroom. Nothing. Just the bed, the bed frame, the rug, and my sock puppet, which I've had for a total of 16 years now. Ooh, I actually do have some string lights over here, which I turn on every now and then when I want to give the old razzle dazzle. Now, many years ago, when I was a young 25 cent postage stamp, I was so excited to get my first apartment. The first thing I wanted to do was get a giant wooden floor mirror. You know, like the ones you see on Pinterest to check my outfits, to check my makeup. And then I remembered, oh wait, why would I try to impress people I don't even like? So I don't have a mirror. I don't see the point in having one. I do not care. This is the closet. Clothing tends to be the culprit for hoarding. This is my current clothing collection. Now, whenever I move states, I come up with a new fashion sense. Let me elaborate. So I am from California, if you did not know. Hello, Californian people. So my original fashion sense was non-existent. I used to just wear hoodies, sweatpants, dirty Converse that desperately needed washing, basic t-shirts. You know, I just dressed like your typical student running late to remedial math. Then I adopted some sort of fashion sense. When I moved to New York City, I said, ooh, let me kind of channel this more preppy, Jackie O sort of aesthetic. I used to have this houndstooth coat with fur cuffs on it, which I would wear a lot. Perfect for Boston. It went there, same deal. I took all the clothes that I had in Boston, which was actually a lot, by the way, because when you're in a cold place, you do have to have thermals, jackets, all that nonsense. So I took half of it to Goodwill. By the way, I tried taking it to this women slash trans shelter in Boston, which people on my Instagram referred me to. And they said, oh, I'm sorry, we're not taking donations. I said, why? With my 20 bags that I took there via, you know, the train. In the freezing cold, by the way. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, why won't you take my donation? They said, oh, because of... I'm like, really? So, shout out to Boston, big cities. You guys don't want to clothe your people because you're paranoid. I brought piles and piles of clean, new, fancy clothing, might I add. I mean, I bougie. I wanted to give it directly to a women slash trans shelter because so many, no offense to you guys watching, sorry, teenagers flock to places like Goodwill and then they take the clothes, which is fine. Someone's taking it. That's what matters. It's just that I would prefer to give my clothes directly to a shelter because they're more in need. You know, I'd rather give those fancy things that I barely wore in Boston to a homeless person instead of some teenager who's just privileged. Anyway, so this is my new fashion sense, okay. So I have four pairs of shoes currently. This is my bougie evening boot. I then have my Yeehaw, but make it fancy boots. These I just bought from Miu Miu. I like it because it's like an over the knee, classic, elegant style. And then on bottom, oh wait, where you going now? I'm back now, you hear? And then of course you have to have classic cowboy boots. These are real calfskin boots from Jeffrey Campbell, which I was wearing at the beginning of the video. And then I'm, I'm gonna get in the corner here. I have these leather plain sandals from Chanel. I really don't like having my feet out open to the public because like feet people are freaky. I don't want them to see my feet. I have nine items of clothing at the moment. This is a beautiful plain silk dress. It is tight. I look like a nice tall glass of soy milk. Then I have this super country looking beautiful backless dress. And then next I have Little Bo Peep, but she belongs to the streets. Then I have my hillbilly, but make a couture jumpsuit. Then I have this bodysuit that you see me wearing in white. These are both from Aritzia. And then it's the same material here, both the same bodysuit again, but it's a V-neck and it's sleeveless. The reason why I live in bodysuits is because I used to have t-shirts. I used to only wear basic, baggy, simple, not really 
gender focused outfits you know like I used to just shop at Muji but then I became too deep into minimalism my outfits were very basic beyond what I'm comfortable with because like I said I am from Los Angeles originally I take fashion seriously how do I be basic and minimalistic in my wardrobe but still provide that extra cuteness to it that little mm. besides those few items of clothing I have one pair of pajamas here underneath there is a golfing outfit it's like a little skirt and then an athletic top I have two basic t-shirts and then this is an athletic outfit three pairs of socks yes three that's just because I mostly wear like stockings with these cowboy boots don't look at my drawers this is my office this is a small desk which I got off Amazon which has this convenient little pouch on the side and then this is the living room now this was a tough decision I have never owned a couch personally, or a TV in a very long time, just because I don't see it as something that's necessary. The cowhide rug means a lot to me, as well as the sheep. By the way, I'm still waiting on the head to come in the mail. Hello, I sat down, ate some ice cream, and then I got too comfortable, and then I accidentally fell asleep, and then I woke up not knowing what year it is. Hello, I'm back, sorry, it's nighttime now. I think I'm just getting old. Two forks, two spoons, one butter knife. This is what I own, I have two plates, one bowl, two cups, and one mug. And now it is time to answer the most frequently asked questions in my past videos. How did I decide on what is minimalist and what is not for my apartment? Well, this is necessary. This desk is also necessary. My plan was to have absolutely nothing in the living room originally. However, I got so tired of walking down this long highway, to <sighs> trekking down these long streets, and it looks kind of weird and I don't want to have all this expensive equipment with me, like my MacBook and everything. So I decided to get this desk. It was a cheap desk on Amazon. Everything in here is very cheap. As for the rest of the place, my plan was to just have a mattress on the ground. Do it like the Japanese do. It's very good for your back. That was until I discovered critters, unwanted critters here. There are very large spiders I've never seen before from the Amazon. They are huge. I'm scared of them being in my bed, so I got a bed frame. That was purely out of fear, not necessity. For the living room, I'm kind of bothered by this, to be honest. I don't know if I want to have the couch or TV anymore. The only reason why I got them both is because I just did not know what to do with the space. And I plan on getting either a cat or a dog. By the way, the reason why I'm just waiting on that is because what if we're allowed to travel internationally in like four months? I don't want to get a little scruffy or get mittens and then have to leave them alone for 10 days because I want to go to Tokyo, you know? So I'm going to see what happens over the next few weeks. A cat I can probably leave here, but I just don't, I don't want to leave an animal alone. And I surely do not trust doggy daycares like with my future dog. I don't even trust, anyway. The reason why I got a couch and a TV is just so that I can have more like things for the dog or cat to sit on honestly and the tv is just to entertain guests but wait i don't have friends here <laughs> so i might as well sell the tv because no one's gonna come here but i do watch k-pop music videos on the tv and to answer the question what was the question how do i decide on what is minimalist and what is not like what is necessary i just think will this thing add joy to my life or will it add money to my life the desk literally adds money to my life because i get more things done here the bed frame adds joy to my life because I'm not getting bitten by, you know, brown recluses. The TV stand though, hmm, it's not adding joy, but it's not taking anything away either. It's on the fence as well as the couch because I really just wanted to have two beanbag chairs and sit there. And the second question that I got the most in all my recent videos is how did you move? How did you literally move? I don't understand how did you move? I got up out of bed, I packed my things in an hour, and I got on a plane and left. I sold the furniture that I did have in my apartment to my subscribers directly. Hello, Stampede. Uh, I imagine the Stampede, like I said, is a bunch of cattle just like bursting through the doors. <laughs> and people were very happy to buy my nicely taken care of furniture. But that's a life hack. If you're like me and you don't sit still for very long, get cheap but you know, nice looking furniture that you can take good care of and resell it for a reasonable price. And it's kind of a way of just always having nice new furniture and because no one wants to have your 
10-year-old dusty couch with all sorts of bodily fluids on it. That's how I'm able to move so easily. It's very easy to sell the things that I have here. This also goes for clothing. My clothes tend to be from like nice higher-end brands. They last a long time. I take very good care of my clothes. I can dry clean. I don't really throw them in the washer too often or I just hand wash it delicately. And these things look super good and super new and other people want to buy them and kind of helping them be sustainable with their shopping. You know, I, I, I reckon that spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on brands like Reformation don't actually help the sustainability movement because you're still spending lots of money and then clothes generate so much waste in the design and production making process. It's just, just So yeah, everything I have fits into one checked bag. I have an accordion folder with my social security, uh, birth certificates, passport, all important documents, all my receipts from all my YouTube related spending. Everything is in that accordion folder and it means the world to me. So I keep that in a very safe place. Other than that, I just don't care about things. I won't happily sell the clothes off my body right now because I know that in my new destination, I can buy them again or you know, move on and just get something new. The trick is to just be okay with letting things go. The reselling process is such a pain that moving once and having that massive closet clean out just changes your life entirely. But in regards to the whole lease situation, I signed a lease in Boston. In the lease it said, if you don't like it here, you know, if you get a job change, whatever, you can move to a different community within our network. So I went online, looked at all the apartment buildings they have available. They had them in California, Illinois, Arizona, Virginia, DC, New York City, everywhere basically. So I went through the list and I just said, okay, which ones kind of strike the balance between luxury but affordability? So I'm here. It's not fancy like the other place. Like the inside is beautiful, they're renovated, but I mean the outside is just like your average run of the mill apartment. It's safe, I like it. It is nearly half the cost of what I paid in Boston and it is double, triple the size. That is all I have for you people. I hope that answers your questions. I just don't have many belongings. This took years of developing this discipline. Get nice furniture, it doesn't have to be expensive. Take good care of it and make it resellable because People don't want junk, they want nice things. Operate on needs versus wants and focus more on your bank account growing instead of having a whole lot of stuff around you. But if it makes you happy to have a cozy, warm environment unlike this, go for it. It's just gonna make your life harder when you have to move out. And remember, minimalism is not a one size fits all lifestyle. You can do whatever you want. I mean, as long as you just understand the necessities of it, which is just, it's meant to declutter your life, declutter your brain. You don't have to have a mattress on the floor to be a minimalist. Don't get sucked into the cult videos where people are like, I eat one lima bean a day because I'm a minimalist. Do what makes you happy. This is what makes me happy. I said I would live in a studio apartment forever, but it just didn't work out for me because we're in a weird time right now. I don't wanna give the whole, these unprecedented times speech, but it sucks being Single, no roommates, no pets, no friends in a city. You gotta just have a bigger space if you're in my situation. And I'm so much happier with this decision. With that being said, I did have to add some items to fill out the place. But okay, that's it. Let me know what other minimalism type of videos you wanna see. If you have any comments or suggestions on how to make this place look less like a mental institution, let me know. 